Hello, welcome to Country Stitchers. I'm Liz. This week is an off week for us. Uh, Deb is busy with some family events. I have some new things on my calendar that haven't been there before. And we also are still preparing something we're going to share with you uh, very soon and looking forward to that. So we're taking a little different approach to this next couple of weeks. And today I'm going to show you some people have shown these in the past and called them whip parades. Deb did one not too long ago as we were still separated from each other with COVID um, restrictions and quarantines. And I did say at the time that I would consider doing that. I was quite surprised when I started looking at doing that particular video because I would not call what's in my bin work. The definition of work says actively involving mental or physical effort and progress is defined as towards a more complete state. Neither of those two descriptors would <laughs> apply to what's in my bin. So I was working on how I could share with you what it is we're about to look at. And it occurred to me that there's got to be an antonym for these words, something that would be the complete opposite. So I thought about a whip bin and then I thought about a bin or a collection and then I looked up the word archive. Archive is a place where historical materials are preserved. Now while I'd hate to consider myself of a historical age, I will agree that some of the items I may share with you today might have some historical ages assigned to them. I'm not going to say when they came to me because that would be a total giveaway, but uh, what I am going to do is share those items, which I prefer to archive maybe repository. Um, the verb uh, to archive means to organize or compile. So in that regard, it does sound like there's been some work involved, right? If you're going to organize something or compile something. So I did do a little of that in preparation for sharing it with you. But then there's an, another word to describe what you have when you have a compilation of something. And that word would be heap or cluster or even pile, perhaps. Um, I prefer the word bin. It sounds a little bit more sophisticated or at least intentional. Um, then, if you have this collection and you want to rid yourself of this collection, and we're going to refer to this as our preserve, um, then you're going to use a word to describe that, which is the opposite of having compiled it, and that would be disperse or disband or split up. <laughs> so, I guess we're about to disperse a pile or disband a batch or a cluster, any way you look at it. We're gonna go through my things and I'm gonna give this a process of assigning a rating to this. And that's gonna help me determine where it goes from here. So if it's in the preserve and I have not even thought about it, then I think it ought to be more like a five instead of a one in priority and the ones might go back into what I would consider my active work which we're not showing today that would be another story so when I hold them up and I get ready to put them aside I think I'm going to divide them up either in the there'll be two classifications on the ones that aren't going back into my work pile that would be either call back and give it a second look after I see it again, because maybe I haven't considered it in a while, or just an automatic pass it on. So that's going to help me eliminate this um, archive and decide what to do with it. And then I have something I want to show you. Uh, we've been talking about threads and colors, and, and I have a couple patterns I'm going to be looking at. Um, 
in the near future, uh, their Quaker patterns, and I hadn't thought about a particular thread I have in quite some time, and I wanted to bring it up and show it to you and um, just let you know it's in my consideration, along with the silks. I hung my silks out here. This is some of my silks, uh, my NPI silks and my hand-dyed fiber silks, things like that that are on spools, Splendid uh, or Splendor, and um, even my silk mores. They're all in a uh, bin. bin. And then these are my other silks. My uh, These are Belsois, Water Lilies, and these are Silken Colors and Gloriana. So I'm going to be looking at those as well. Um, with regard to these other samplers. So without further ado, I wanna say a, a particular hello to somebody that I know is not having the best day. Um, I follow her, she has a blog. Her name is Connie. Connie, hello. Um, I just wanna remind you on a day like today, those Oreo sandwich cookies go great with a day like that. Um, I in fact have some in my freezer. I was gonna bring it in and hold it up, but then I'd have to leave the room, put it back in the freezer or eat it. Neither of which I wanted to do right now. So um, just remember those. And for those of you who may not have seen the video where I shared that, um, take a regular Oreo, and I'm an Oreo fanatic. Open it up gently, you don't wanna break it. Take a melon baller size scoop of your favorite ice cream or ice cream that you think would go good with that cookie. Put it in between the two sides of the sandwich cookie, give it a little bit of a press, pop it back in the freezer and it is the perfect size. And you, mm, the lemon cream ones with vanilla ice cream in them are awesome. So anyway, that's something that Connie and I both share. And Connie, um, I hope you have a, uh, an upward climb in your weekend. So, I've not got these in any particular order. You're gonna see quite a variety. This is an ornament that I started. It's by Mill Hill. It's one of their little winter holiday series. And it's just the red wagon, it's so cute. And I started it, I don't know why I didn't get back to it. I have no concept of why. But um, all I got done on this one was the little gift that goes, uh, you attach to the actual front of the ornament, sits on top of the wagon. So that's what I was working on when I stuck it aside. Probably I got busy with other Christmas things and thought this was gonna be a last minute project and I didn't get back to it. So this one, I am definitely going to give a back into the work pile so it's going into the work basket. And then another one of that same nature that I really like, and I do want this in the work pile. I haven't seen this since last fall, is my Paisley pumpkin. It's a Mill Hill buttons and beads pattern. This is from hmm, what was the year? Two. 2014, I think. Pretty sure of it. Um, and that's where I am. I don't have a lot to do, actually. I just have the, the solid sections of the border. I think what happened was I ran out of a particular floss color because I restarted a section of this. I had miscounted my start position. So I started over, and I had a pretty good chunk of the border done when I did that. So when I did, I ran out of that thread, so I have to go pull some. And I think that deterred me. But everything that isn't on the pumpkin right now, the stem, the vine, the leaves, are all beads. All the spots in here. And so all I really have left to stitch is just this little solid section. And then I bead it. So that's going in the work pile for sure. This one is a Just Nan pattern. And I didn't... Take it completely apart. It's a little needle slide and it's a nutcracker and it's a pocket. You make the pocket that the little needle slide sits in. That's the back of it and that's the front of it where it folds over. It's really cute. One of the common threads in this process I went through to prepare for the video is that I noticed the 
pieces that have fabric that are not my favorite fabric to stitch on seems to be one of the reasons that these pieces have ended up archived. Now, I had started doing the outline, is what I was working on, the outside of it. So I need to resume that. And I am gonna put that in the work pile. I guess the question is how soon it goes back into the work. Um, and that, I guess, I don't know what I would, help me out, what do you call those things that you're not currently working on? If whips are work in progress, what do you call the ones that you have? Uh, not the archived ones, now mind you, because those we know have been here too long. Here's one. This goes back to when I joined my first guild. We were given a little piece of fabric to stitch our own name tag, and we were supposed to design our own name tag. And I'll show you the pattern, because it's my pattern. Um, this is it. It has, let's see, I put up here twin and I mirrored the word. And then it has a crayon and some M&Ms and I don't know what the other small thing is there. Oh, I was just counting. That's a number circle. Put your glasses on, Liz. So it has a crayon and some M&Ms. Those are to represent my grandchildren and oh and also I did the crayon in my favorite color and the M&Ms are just one of the things I like to snack on then this is a Christmas tree because that's my favorite holiday and then over here is our guild it was the EGA Mississippi Mississippi River Valley chapter and then around here I put words that say something about me um, in the alphabet and I really, really like it, and it's coming along nicely. I think I'm going to finish it. I'll probably come up with something else to put in where the guild is and um, perhaps just use it as a general name tag for whenever I'm somewhere. So this one is a holder, hold on to pattern, um, a keeper. So we'll put that in one. That, yeah, they can't all be a one. So that's maybe a, a three but in the same bin as a one. Here is a piece, Christmas piece from the Friendship Collection. This was in my mother's stash. We all had the same frames and patterns from this Friendship Collection. We went to Cross Stitch Cottage together and they were having a sale and we all liked them. So I still have this section that goes on the shelf above the picture, um, I mean above the room that shows through the picture frame. And then this rug down here needs done. So I have a frame, but it doesn't allow for this shelf. So I think I'm gonna finish this portion and then put it into the frame I do have. I don't have the exact frame that goes with that. You'll see from the picture how each of the patterns fits into a different frame. These are very similar and these are very similar, but this one that's unique from the rest of the design happens to be the one I don't have. And I'm going to keep that in the stash because that's something that my mother put time into. And it reminds me of her. This is a Little House Needleworks pattern. I started this on the plane when I was visiting my dad in Arizona and my mom. She dad lived out there. My brother did as well. My sister-in-law, Karen. Hi, Karen. Heard from Barbara Jean today. That was fun. She emailed us. This is done in silk. This is Ocean Tide and Icing right here by Belle Swa. And this is where I got to. I stopped because I did not like the way that thread, it was very strange. Um, I, I wasn't real fond of how it was looking. And so I went back to the thread to look at it and I set it aside and I need to go back and look at it again because I don't, I do not see that level of variegation in that thread when I look at it and it comes out when I'm stitching. So it's very subtle, but it's very noticeable when I stitch it. So I need to take a look at the thread and see what I want 
the alphabets to look like. Um, I'd like them to be a little bit deeper and not quite so variegated, so I'm going to play with that. So we'll give that one a two. So just as a reminder, anything that's a one to a one or a two is going in the keeper bin, three to five. I can pass it on to a friend or share it with the local thrift stores and Goodwill. This is a spring boutique pattern. I'm doing this for a special reason. I'm not going to go into the details about it right now, but I like it. It's going with something else I'm working on. But I'm changing the color palette. This is what I got stitched so far. I changed it to colors that match some papers that I have for my scrapbooking. So this will ultimately end up in my scrapbook. But these are the these are the colors. They were very popular in some magazines, these colors, um, from overseas for a while. And then they showed up on the scrapbook paper that Deb and I bought. Um, so that's a two. This is Isabella Sinclair, 1827. Deb's got this in her current work. And this should actually be in my current work but it got put into the bin, and so it's been a while since I actually even looked at it. And it's called a Scottish Sampler, and it's by GPA. So the threads, Deb and I chose these threads. They did not have the threads that were called for, and we were going to look ourselves anyway, and Deb is so good with the colors, so we went between all the different thread vendors and picked out our own selection based on what we wanted to pull through in the pattern. And I think our color palettes are almost identical. I don't think we we got different colors. She might be using a different color for something. I vaguely remember she might have pulled a different one, but anyway, that's as far as I got. I started out pretty quick on it, but then I got it steered in a different direction. So that's definitely a two. When I say a one or a two, that's only in reference to how quickly I might work on it again. Not really whether or not it's in the same bin, because they're all in that bin. This one you haven't seen. Oh, I did forget to say that anything I'm currently working on, I'm not showing today. This is simply things I have not picked up and you haven't seen on the video in quite some time. This one I haven't shown since February. I was doing this little guy actually January maybe, um, while we were on our retreat. So yeah, I guess it would make it February because I was in Super Bowl during that month. So it's by Blackbird Designs and it's Easter Parade. And I'm doing it with the colors they showed and that's a definite two. This is called Lovebird. It's by Just Another Button Company. And I have the pin cushion they did that looks like that. And so I wanted to stitch the bird to go with it. The only thing is it's on Aztec Red. And these are the, the fabrics that I have difficulty stitching on. They are, <clears throat> excuse me, very loose in the weave. Now there's my bird. His face goes in here. This is the beginning of his tail and there's darker accents that go on the wings and his face that I haven't put in. So he's coming and then the spool underneath. But what I did on this one, because I do want to finish it, is I put stabilizer on the back and I'm stitching through the stabilizer and that helps when I draw my threads um, taut that they don't collapse quite as much without as they would without the stabilizer. So that's definitely a two. I honestly have not even looked at him in a long time, so that was fun to see him. He's been there a while. Here's a little piece that I got out. I worked on one day, Gung Ho. It's by Just Nan. It's a needle tweet, and it's a little birdie. And when you open it up, it has a little felt page for your needles. And I started it. I even had hopes of doing two of them. Um, so I had a pair. But I got it 
I got, I'm not even sure. I think all I have is just a little bit more definition on the color of the flower to do. The outlining is done. Very little to stitch. It's put it together is pretty much all. But to give you an idea of how long it's been since I looked at this, I have not used a stitch bow thread system. I took it all apart probably 10 years ago. So this is, um, <laughs> this is a surprise. So here it is. And you can see that's the, the flower. Then you have a wing. So really all I need to do is position the little curly cues that go to the wing and put the second color on the flower. And, and that's that. So that's a two. This is by Stony Creek. It's beads and paper. And this design we did in our Saturday Stitcher. I showed it before, I think once early on when we were doing our first videos. I have quite a bit of it stitched. Um, what remains on this are, well, I guess just one color, one green color needs to go on it, and then the beads, and it's done. The thing is, I started working on this, as you can see, in 2008, and I had looked at the other ladies, and theirs were so crisp looking, and I thought, what am I doing wrong? Or what are they doing differently? And then I realized that my holes were not completely cut through. So there were fuzzy sections of the paper inside the holes. I, I think you can see, like here's one, here's one. Anyway, if you had this in your hand and could study it, you'd see that they were throughout the body of the paper. And so I thought, wow, it really does make a difference in the finished product. So I asked for another piece of paper uh, by email. And you can just, just the two pages side by side, you can kind of see a difference in the, the vibrancy when you look through it. You can see quite a few of those over here. So anyway, I was certain I would restitch this and put up the one that was done this way, um, but I'm not. I'm going to finish the one I have, and I'll do something else with the other piece of paper. So we'll give that one a two. I have gotten a few things finished recently as I've been going through this process. I started by just going through the things that I grabbed out of the front of the bin and taking them if they were close to finished and finishing them. So we're catching up. This is a Prairie Schooler piece. And it's called Oh Christmas Tree. And right now, I'm not, there we go. I was gonna say I'm not finding my fabric. Um, I'm not going to do this individually like this. I'm going to put, this is the 12 days of Christmas basically. Some of them have three parts of the song and some just have one part. So I'm going to do this like an etui. I'm gonna make these a little bit bigger. The picture will be will represent a little smaller scale on the size of the tree. And I'm going to combine them and just do a triangular shaped etui out of it. I think it would be fun. They also have, um, I think these three patterns are inside as well. So this is the fabric. And I started the little French hens and I definitely need to put some more time in this. So this is a two. It's going to go back when I get busy on my stitching kits. I'm guessing I'll probably stitch on these um, again when Christmas is actually over if I'm doing a sewing kit. I'm not going to finish that before the holiday. I have other things to finish for the holiday. This one is adorable. It's by Alessandro Adelaide, and it's called Happy Tree. I did not have any idea, though, when I looked at it and saw the colors and ordered it exactly the size and dimension. So at the time, I didn't even look to see what the stitch count was. So when it came, it was bigger than I thought it would be, but I really like it. 
Uh, I just need to put it where I see it regularly because this is one of those pieces that if you have it in front of you and you stitch a couple flowers each day, it'll be done quickly. There is quite a bit of it done. Um, let's see if I can give you some... I'm in this section here. I've kind of come in that way. So, if you look, you'll see it's kind of down into here. So, that's a two. Maybe I'll pull that out next spring. And what I need to do is maybe when I put these away, do it in, in some fashion that I have something to reference them so I know they're there. And when I'm thinking about working on something different, I can take them into account because that's what's happened in the past is they're together in a, in a spot somewhere I don't go to. And then I don't get them out to think about them. This is a free pattern from Ink Circles. It's called Lobster Bouquet. I don't know if you'll be able to really make it out, but yeah, you should be able to. It's a lot of fun, and I found a silk that I like, and I wanted to do it as an ornament. It reminded me of my time in Maine. And the red that I really liked for it, when I thought about lobster, was actually strawberry shortcake. So that's the, the red I'm using by Classic Color Works. And I wanna work on that. This one is a one, can it be a one plus? Uh, I wanna put this pretty soon, um, maybe as I gather things up after the video, I think I'm gonna stick this in with the ornaments I'm working on so that that comes to my attention right off the bat. I like it, I better put that thread with it too. I have two similar pieces here. Cricut Collection. You've seen this Deb's version of Autumn and ours are the same because we chose the same color palette. And I did just start mine. I'm not sure yet whether this will come right back out for the fall. I'm almost finished with the little fall piece I was already working on, so it might show up again real soon. That's a two, definitely. This one will be a two, because I'm certainly not gonna work on it right now, but this is the Easter Cricut Collection piece. I really like this, I have the buttons. I've picked out variegated colors to do the letters in. Not variegated, pretty much over dyed actually. Um, I'll show them to you. That's the palette I put together for those. Purple Aster, Peacock, Victorian Pink, Harvest Basket, Summer Shower, and Wood Rose. So those will be the different letters. And did I show you? All I did on this one is start the purple to see how I thought about the palette. I like that purple on the pale yellow. So anyway, I'm going to put this in as a two and we will get back to that in the springtime. Here's one I actually forgot I had in progress. It used to be on my turnstile when I had my patterns on a turnstile and it's called Oh Whale by Hands on Design. I hunted for this I would get to a shop that had this collection, the beach collection, and I have Anchors Away. I like that one as well. I, I like them all, but I just didn't think I would stitch them all, so I got the two favorites, Anchors Away and Oh Whale, but it took me a while to find Oh Whale. So I'm currently working on our little guy, Baby Whale, and I'm using the over dyed colors they chose and also the fabric. I think the fabric is just a uh, piece of natural I had in my stash. I had at one point um, a pretty large piece of natural and also a piece of country mocha that I bought when I saw it come out and I liked it. And so on something like this, I often just grab it out of there. That one's gonna get a two. We'll put that back in sometime soon. 
This one is a sampler by Rosewood Manor. I have very little left to do, actually, just the border of the alphabet, which sounds kind of like half of it, but the, the color changing part in the middle of the vase, that's all done. The border's all one color, that's seagull. This is where it was very noticeable. We had to pick up multiple skeins of each color. There were five colors. Seagull needed multiple skeins. Grasshopper, whiskey, bullfrog all needed multiple skeins. And when I picked them up, I really noticed the difference in the dye lots between a couple of the skeins. And that's one of the things that jumped out at me. Um, often I'll just pick up one skein for something and not pay any attention, but... When Deb and I were shopping for this, um, or at this shopping time, we were at Strawberry Sampler, and I that's when I first realized exactly how much difference there is. And I ended up buying the Grasshopper all over again because when I got home, I still didn't think they looked close enough. Then I thought, well, I could mix them up and not just stitch in one spot with them, and that works too, but I did it the other way. There's my vase, so I need to add the border. And that's not a huge sampler at all. That's a two. This is from a class. It's a coaster. This is what we worked on. And I think they had two or three colors or something that you could bring and use. And at the time I was thinking if I did it, I'd give it to my husband. So I think I did it in this dark green. But pretty much what's left is cutting the threads and doing the wrapping. And I'm going to give this one a four. It's been here for 11 years, 10 years. It's been quite a, quite a few years. Um, I don't think I'm going to finish it off. So that's going in that bin. Here's another one I worked on. And this came from the EGA. I bought it through their database when I was a member. It's called Spinning Spools. It's canvas work done on, I did this one on Congress cloth. I just thought it was adorable, but I saw it and what crossed my mind instead of just a little square was doing the finishing work on this as a biscornu. I thought that might be cute. But I got the spools started and I used some different types of threads. I used some Encore and Bravo variegated over dyed yarns in the thread sections um but i haven't done the outside borders or the i did do the tops and bottoms of the spools so i've got sort of a center chunk of it those are the two encore and bravo that i use the colors i haven't done the other two i'm going to give this one a four i don't see myself revisiting that one This one is missing a pumpkin. I have very little to do. Sorry, I'll show you the picture first. It's called Harvest Trio. It's a Jim Shore pattern put out by Stony Creek. Oh, sorry, Mill Hill. I did that the other way around earlier too. So this one I did on banding. And all that's left on those top two to go in are the beads. And there's just a tiny bit of black that goes on his tail down here that I have to do. And then the pumpkin. And there's not a lot of stitching in it. And the rest is beading. And I am trying to decide if I want to do anything adjacent to this finished edge. Like a checker or maybe a herringbone stitch or something down the side. Just something to give it something to keep it from getting lost in the wall when it hangs. So um, this one, definitely a two. This is a Jeanette Douglas pattern called Mini Quaker Stitches. I wanna do that little pillow in the worst way. I don't wanna frame it. I want that elongated pillow and Deb found a color in my stash of fabric that she thought would just go so pretty on the colors I picked out, which it does, absolutely. 
there's the colors. Aren't they gorgeous? Now, I think those are the ones that were called for, and I had originally pulled a neutral. And she chose this. The only difficulty being that this is one of those looser um, fabrics that make it difficult for me the way I stitch. So I've been working very carefully on this so that the stitches are formed properly. I even pulled the first two times. I pulled out the work I did because I didn't care for the way they looked. But I finally went, I believe, to using a small Q-snap on this so that I could get the, the prominent cross in my cross stitch. So I'm going to keep working on it. I am going to give it a two. Um, but I am learning from this exercise that I am not going to allow myself to get dragged into using fabric that I just at the very, be if at the very outset I pick it up in my hand and I know it's not going to work for me, I'm just going to say, I love it. I have to find a different fabric and just go on for a little search. Maybe I won't find it that day. Maybe I'll find it somewhere else another day, but I'm going to make myself accept the latitude of, of giving myself time to find the fabric I want. Um, Often it was driven by the fact that that's what I had and I didn't live near a needlework store. For many years I had to drive to a needlework shop and it was over an hour, so I didn't didn't have that latitude. And we weren't shopping online at that time either. So this is a pattern by, by <laughs> Jardin Privé and it's a Christmas pattern that I did with a stitch along. And I got off to a great start, and then Christmas came and went, and I set it aside. So I need to pick it back up. This would be a good time to do that, so I'm going to give this a one. I think it would be fun to pick it up. It's all DMC. I do find that with this fabric with the sparkle on it, while I like it on this, I did think I would, and I do. It distracts me when I'm counting the fabric, so I think I have to keep that in mind too in the future. Whether I want something that'll go a little bit quicker, I probably won't use something that has that um, holographic sort of rainbow thread through it. The gold and the silver don't bother me as much, but that translucent one makes it harder for me. This pattern, I actually don't have a picture of, so I just dropped the fabric in. Cindy Valentine is a designer, very well known. She's been at the Williamsburg Christmas uh, events. She teaches at our guild in, in Iowa. She travels around, um, very nice woman. And she was in our guild and she did this little Valentine's pattern for us. It was a small Biscornu fob. And I have the front done, or the back, depending on which side you're looking at. And I started the second one, which is a pulled thread, and I just haven't finished it, and I need to do that. It's adorable. So I'm going to give this a two. It was done with pearl cotton. We were supposed to bring in, I think, pearl cotton and floss. We needed um, fibers of each gauge. So we had a six-strand cotton, an eight, and a twelve pearl cotton we were supposed to bring in to work on that. Here's something very different. I picked this up at the Jubilee in Lancaster. Oops, here's the thread. Sorry about that. I dropped it in my lap. That's from that little Biscornu uh, pearl cotton. So this is by Teresa Lehman. It's called the Bunny Around, the Bunny Run Around, sorry. Um, and it's a small, it looks like a, a hooked rug when you're done. They're called miniatures. Deb has one I love. There are some other ones that are just gorgeous. I like a, the one of them, they have it, it's a Christmas round and it's just adorable with peppermints and gingerbread. And these are all colonial knots. So she stands there and demonstrates this at the event we were at and just 
puts those knots out just as fast as you can imagine. She says, it's easy. You just sit, you watch TV, you make your knots. And I think, oh, it looks so easy. I started on it. I got the knots on my little divider threads and they, they do go pretty easily, but you do have to keep your eye on what you're doing. And I forget, she knows about how many knots go into these. Um, it's unbelievable. But I'm going to give this one a two because I definitely want to revisit that. That's one of those pieces you put in your curio cabinet or on your shelf and you think, I'm so glad I tried that. Now, whether I will do it again, if I found that Christmas pattern, I might. That Christmas pattern is adorable. I like the colors, so it's a possibility. I also have a Morgan hoop for my punch needle, which is really good to use with this too because you want it nice and tight for doing your your knots. So here's a kit that I bought in Arizona when I visited a shop out there called The Needle Nest and it's no longer in business. But this is a small stitching kit. It was a fundraiser for breast cancer awareness and it has several pieces in it. You know, it holds your needles, your threads, um, and it folds up nice it came with everything fabric threads i started on the pulled thread at the top um and well actually the very beginning border that i started on is the nun stitch the four-sided so that's what i was working on and i do not think i'm likely to get back to this um it's been here for so long. This has been in my bin hmm, maybe eight years, seven, eight years now. So I'm going to give this one a four. I have other needle stitching kits that I'm working on that are probably going to get more attention than that one. Not long ago, Deb shared her, Rebecca, this is mine. You're about to see by Kathy Barrick. These are these are just precious, and the seaman's chest, I believe, or sea captain's chest, is this brown that's in here, the silk, and it's a a silken color. Oh no, it's just sea chest. That's what it is. Anyway, it's gorgeous. The color, and I started mine, but I was not diligent. I was working on two other spring patterns and I did not work on the bunny. So we're going to put him in. Make him a two. Or her, I guess Rebecca is a her. So she's a two. Here's one. This really took me back. I got this on eBay. I just happened to be looking through their needlework section at the time. I wasn't looking for the pattern itself. But 48 years ago is when I started doing embroidery. And this is the first pattern I ever embroidered. It was so much fun. I was 12. I had saved up my needlework, or my allowance. I mean, I went down. I bought all the colors that went into her. And my mom and dad used to get their checks in those little boxes. And so I had a little checkbook box and they're the perfect size for a skein of floss. So all my floss for the project was in mom and dad's checkbook box that they'd just gotten. And I worked on this until I had it done. I wish I still had it. I don't know where we lost it, but with being in the military and moving as often as we did, there were times where we would lose boxes from a move and not find it. Well, it would be years until we needed that box for something and then didn't recall where the item was. Well, I lost a couple of personal boxes and I think maybe she was in it. But she's so cute and this is the cross stitch version. So I started her thinking I had this perfect color. It was a, a remnant. And I do like the color. I think it would be beautiful. But again, it's a fabric that I'm really struggling with. So I started her bonnet. And while I'm sitting here talking, it just occurred to me, before I completely dismiss using this color, I'm going to put some stabilizer on the back of this and give it another go. Because I do like the color combinations on this. 
So we're going to give that a two. I actually had intended to maybe give it a four, but we're going to bump that up to a two. When I started showing it to you, I'm thinking, no, I'm not coming back to this. Here's one that's part of a another kit I have, but I just don't think I'm going to do this now because I have a tin to put it in. I was going to use this pattern and make a bag of it for a clasp piece from the Jamboree, but now I'm going to set this aside. I'm going to give it a five because I'm not going to stitch it. In fact, I think I'm just going to rescue this piece of fabric from these stitches and use this fabric for something else. Um, so that's definitely a five on its way to a, to a better place back in the stash. This is a Lizzie Kate winter alphabet. I really think it's adorable. I think some of those motifs would be just precious on sleds or perforated paper or just as a hanging ornament. So I really, I like the pattern a lot. I just started playing with it when I wanted to do a new start. So I did the B at the top and started the mittens. The C, the mittens were uh, between the A and the B for the winter theme. And I think I'm going to perhaps cut this maybe do one or two across the top there where I can make them into little ornaments and um, set this aside for when I really want to do it intentionally for something, but I'm not going to, I'm going to give this one a five and feed it back into the pattern box on the stash. There's really not even enough to, to do anything with there intentionally anyway. B was my maiden name, started with a B, so I'm not going to use the B for anything right now. This is another Lizzie Kate pattern called At Our House, and I really appreciate the sentiment on this. And I changed it a little bit, that each of these intentional words, house, real, mistakes, sorry, do-overs, fun, forgiveness, well, hugs, patience, family, and love, those are all going to get done in the same color so that you see those and they make a, a visual statement as well as a literary statement. So I changed it to that sort of sweet potato color. So that's where I am on that. And originally when I did this, I had a family in mind that I was going to do it for, but I've decided to do it because I want to do it. And we'll see if I, if I frame it and put it up or if I pass it on to somebody. But anyway, the occasion that I was doing it for is no longer an occasion, so uh, we're making that a two. This is a piece I was working on last year during a stitch along, but I did not continue with it at the time. It's called Tis the Season. It's by Blackbird Designs. It's charted with silks or DMC or... And Belle Soie were the silks that they used on this one. I almost said or, but there's no or. The book itself that I took it from was Joy Noel. It's a marvelous book. But this book was out of print, and they subsequently released that same pattern, Tis the Season, in Home for the Holidays. So if you're looking for it, you can find it in that publication. And this is as far as I got. This is right where that little strand, the Cardinal's, holding his beak is in here and this goes up over him and off it goes. When you're doing this, the, the fabric I have is one of those fabrics that's only variegated on one side. It's made by fabricflare.com. So if you ever buy fabric and you love how it's modeled, make sure, especially if it's a lighter color like this, that you make sure you're on the right side because there's a solid side to that and it doesn't have the stamped over dyed color on it. And that's just the fabric that's made by this company. I don't know about all the other companies, but we had a class and we did a piece and somebody uh, used the opposite side and it was very pretty because it was a solid sort of uh, mocha colored, but the flip side had more modeling on it. And so it ended up her piece looked different than everybody else's, but it was still pretty. This next one is by Jeanette Douglas, and it's called What a Hoot. 
It's a friend owl from the What a Hoot series, actually. And I started working on that. And I got the border and the branch completed, started on the little motif underneath. And the two owls have a very different stitching in it, and that's going to be fun, different stitches. So this is going to get a two. We're going to revisit that. Again, I still have to think through how I'm going to store these guys. This next piece is one that I need to put on a small frame and leave in front of me, I think. It's a, a full coverage piece by Heaven and Earth Designs. This particular pattern is done by Randall Spangler. I love his little dinosaurs, and he has several of them out, and some of them are large pieces. This is called a bookmark. It's a very big bookmark, but they call them a bookmark. And I have just this section up here started. I was following the parking techniques of a few people out on floss tube. Um, probably goes back oh, five years, maybe, when I got this. And it is kind of fun to see it develop. I'm doing it on Congress cloth and I really like that fabric for this. And I'm using one strand and I'm doing a full cross. As I do it, I think to myself, I could speed this up if I only did a tent stitch. But with the Congress cloth, it does have a larger aperture between the threads than a lot of linens. And I don't want to a loose open look to the finished piece. I want it to look almost as a tapestry. So I'm going to keep going with a full cross stitch on that one. Here's a piece I have to finish my creativity for. The pattern itself is by the Stitching Parlor. They designed this little box and Salty Yarns had one on their cabinet. They still have it down there for show. And I loved it from the minute I saw it. It's called Treasure Sewing Box. But after I had it home, I looked at the design and I thought, I really would like to have that be stitching related on the top. And so I started looking for something small that I could put up there that I liked, that I thought would be cute in my craft room. And I ran across this pattern by Hinzeit, and it's called Stitch Time. And all of that is cross-stitched. It's very cute. Um, those are long stitches on the skeins. And then the, the center's cross-stitched. But I changed it up a little. And all I need to do now, I have another pattern called uh, a series of Quaker medallions. This just came out, which is what brought this back to the top of the pile. This just came out by Needlework Press. And I love those medallions because they're going to work wonderfully well for me to use on these two inserts. This is the scissor pocket, and I'm going to put a Quaker medallion in there. And then on the pin cushion, I'm going to do something with Quaker medallions down here. So that'll all be inside of my Stitch Time box. And this is my piece. I actually use the, the stitches are not half of the skein in long stitch. They go from one side to the other, complete stitches. And then I wrapped them with these little pieces of DMC paper that came off the skeins. And then I took some thread and wrapped some little loops from underneath the label out to the end. So you can see it looks sort of like they're curled threads, strands for the box. Um, oh, that's just a little uh, away knot there on the side. And that's the width. And then I'm putting a little triangular pattern underneath. Um, I think I'm going to have some long stitches inside of that when I'm done. And I'm going to refit the box, make sure it's the right size. And then I'll move on. I have plenty of fabric to the other medallion pieces for the inside. I would like to put this in as a one because I would like to get this uh, finished and out. I can't believe that tucked that in there and forgot about it. 
So let's go back to the front here. I have some of the smaller things. Oh, here's one for you. This is a piece done by Tokens and Trifles. This is what their packaging looks like. And it came with a little needle, but inside this are little perforated paper cards that are die cut with a real pretty border or edging to them. And you get the card to stitch on, and then you get a similarly cut card with the die cut around the outside to back your stitching. So when you're done, I'll, I'll let you see the back of my stitching here. Um, take that needle off. Those are my kitties. The pattern I'm doing here on this, it's called, I may not have stuck the paper in here. Um, it's Halloween Ghosts, I think it's called. Anyway, um, it was a free pattern by Krynik. And these have six different kitties, all different color combinations. So I pulled colors that matched kitties that we've had in the past, and I started stitching them. And then this kitty that sits here has a blanket over him, and all you see is his tail and his ears, and he's the little ghost kitty. So there's six of them. I don't know why it got stuck away, but it did, and I'm doing them in full crosses with one strand. And then, I said I'd show you the back. That's the back. And then you just attach the backing card to the front by just running a little running stitch down through this set of holes that go the periphery of the cards and put them together. So it's real easy to finish. Anyway, this is cute. This is seasonal. It's coming right up. So that's going to get a one. We're going to knock that out. Maybe we put that on the tree I have out in the kitchen now that have my strawberries on it. Maybe we'll pick the strawberries put up some of these fall ornaments because there's another one, two more I'm working on right now. They're going to be quick to finish and uh, you'll see those before too long. This is a Beth Seal pattern. I did start this I think last winter, maybe January. So it's been about eight months on this and it's just called Winter Cometh. It's done with only three DMC colors. 823, 926, and 610, if that means anything to anyone. And I started it, I'm doing it on, I believe this is 40 count over two. And I am using two threads. I like the definition, and I like the way it looks. So I just have the one side done down here. I need to start across. I'm going to give that a two not sure when I'll get back around to that. Here's one. This one goes back to 2010, I think. The pattern itself is from a Stony Creek magazine. It came out in 2006, the August issue. And I just thought that was adorable. I did not have the Newport fabric that they used here, which I think is cute. Um, I just used a piece I had bought at that retreat that I liked with the colors. And I have the one pumpkin done, and I tucked it away. So I'll give this one a two. I'm not sure it'll come right out with the fall. And I am busy right now, and I think part of why I haven't picked it back up. I want to do something different with the sign, and I just am not sure what. I'm thinking of some kind of a fill stitch that isn't a cross stitch, but I've just got to take a look at it, and I haven't done it yet. So we'll give that one a two. This shows a total lack of organization. Um, this is by the Trilogy. The attached button was the safety pin that's on the little birth sampler there at the top. I'm just going to use a safety pin on the other ones I'm doing. I'm on my fourth and fifth one of these, I believe. Uh, my twins haven't got theirs. And the one I'm holding in my hand is my other granddaughter's. 
and I have to put her name and date on there, but that's the idea. I may change up the other ones and do a different fill stitch on the diaper too. Maybe choose a different color for the outside of the diaper. That would be fun. Make the twins a little different from each other. But that one just fell to the bottom of the pile. This has been in there for, oh gosh, well, obviously quite a few years. So we're going to make that a, a one. We need to get that back up to the top. I'm going to have to watch this video after I'm done and write down what I'm ascribing to these numbers and why so that I don't forget what I'm doing with them. Here's one from another cross-stitch magazine, just cross-stitch, and it's called Winter Mandala. Tracy Horner did a four-part series, seasonal. I bought the kits to the winter and autumn, I believe. I liked those two. I may even have summer. I'm not quite sure. Uh, and then I bought the threads from Hand Dyed Fiber from Vicki Clayton. So, I don't know if you can see it or not, but there are sled dogs in this one. Those are what's in the corners here on the sides and trees. Uh, it's kind of interesting to read what all is included. I keep looking at it thinking I'm seeing things. I don't know if they're intentional or not. So I have the threads, and they're beautiful. They're so true to the to the picture. It doesn't happen often, but there's the center of the design I started. Now this is a softer, this is a cashel. So it's a softer fabric and a softer linen. But for some reason, the finish on this makes it easier for my threads and my tension than the threads on the Weeks fabric. Um, and I can't explain that. I do not know why, but I just know that I could do just fine stitching on the cashel. So that's why I have that lavender fabric. It was actually pulled initially to, to be the background to a teddy bear pattern, and I decided to use it on that instead. So that's a, that's a two. And here is Little House Needleworks, Needlework ABCs. It's adorable. I really like it. I just don't know with everything I'm currently doing though, how soon I'll get back to it. And I really do not have much done on it. I did just a small portion of the side border and the little leaf motif across the top. So I'm gonna give this one a five. And I think I'm gonna run this back into my pattern bin and my stash and think about that another time because I just am not not doing it right now. Here is a Mill Hill pattern called I Love and um, Charmed Ornaments. That's the, the series. And the title of this one is Love Notes. And I got it with my husband in mind because he's a musician. Unfortunately, it wasn't long after we were married. He appreciates that I have this interest and that I have it to do, especially times when I can't ambulate and I'm not up and about but he is not one to display my stitching anywhere or wear it or do other things with it I don't think a lot of men would I did stitch a picture for him before we were married and finished it for I think it was his birthday um, when we were first married he does put that on the wall so if this were something he could hang on the wall he might feel differently but I decided he's not going to do anything with it so it kind of got stuck aside. Oops. Uh, I didn't finish it. So this one's going to get a three. It'll go back in the stash for now. And I'm going to be talking about my stash in that regard uh, to the beads and button kits because it occurred to me. I don't think I've ever shared that. Here is a pattern and I started this because I needed something just different. So I thought I'd start it, but I started at the wrong place. I started with the border and all it is is a straight cross stitch, one color all the way around everything. And it didn't hold my attention very much, but it's by my lady's needle. I love it. It's the Quaker ruler pocket. And then the other part are the Quaker rule accoutrements. They go together. 
I have the old willow threads that it called for, and I tracked them down. I actually tracked them down at Stitches Unlimited when it was owned by uh, Lois Parker, and it was primarily needlework, uh, not needlework, excuse me, needlepoint and painted canvas. And she happened to have some cross stitch stuff and it just happened that she had a bin with old willow threads in it and every one of them I needed. So I actually bought two of each thinking I needed to make sure I had enough. And so I don't know at this point, given that there's, you know, two kits, exactly how much I'll use. But this is the, the whole set when it's done. And what I'd like to do is put that in a nice shaker box. Uh, I think that would be pretty. Those are the old willow threads. These are, I mean, you can find these in shops that still have them, uh, but they're not being produced anymore. And then the fabric for this is blinding. It's 40 count. So this was before I had ever taken on a 40 count project. Now that I've done some with classes and other projects, I've got my own rhythm and technique down and I know how I can best work on them. Um, so this will be fun to pick up, but all I ever did was get started on that straight border. So when I start it over, I'm gonna start inside of the design and do some color changes and get some of those designs going. And I think I'll, I'll stay attached to it a little bit easier. We're gonna give that a two. This is Beth Twist from Heartstring Samplery, her brown bird dis biscornu. And I think the last time I worked on this was down at the retreat that we went on um, in Feb well, end of January, early February for our Super Bowl getaway. And I did one vein that is, let's see, leading right like along here. I had come from the center out and was just starting to add on some of these leaves and stems and flowers or berries, flowers I guess they are. So that is a two. Yeah, let's make that a one. That's a one. I've had that tucked around. Now here's one that's interesting. I went through and I found this and the pattern is from A Gift of Stitching, the PDF magazine that was out. And I have it printed off, but I don't have a picture of it, so I can't share that with you. But it's a Quaker pattern, and it's called Willie's Quaker Square. So I think you'll like it. It's done with, I'm doing it with water lilies. The color is steel. And I chose it because I had just ordered a set of water lily silks from eBay that someone was clearing out. And so they were marked down considerably. I thought, well, that would be a neat way to pick up a few colors. Well, ended up that I also had one of these. So I ended up with multiple skeins. And that made me feel confident that I could take on a project all one color and use the skeins. And I happen to have this same color in fabric. And I really like this. And it's coming along nicely. So this is going to go back out as a one. I want to keep working on that. I really enjoy it. Willie's Quaker Square, that's what that's called. Then we have another fall pattern. You've seen the, the winter Christmas version, if you will. Uh, one of them, anyway. Lizzie Keat has more than one. This is called the Boo Club. And it is a Halloween fall series. And there's a series of cards. And each of the cards have two of these words. The pattern's on them for two of these. And I'm doing it all as a sampler. So right now, I am on the first card which is spooky 
and treats. That's the first one. And there is a an outline pattern free for the border online and you don't do the individual borders on these individual cards then when you use the outside outline. These are the colors. Um, they're very bright. But they're not crayon bright, if you know what I mean. They're bold. They're bold and true. And then here we go. I'm doing it over one on Lugana. And I'm just at the beginning of the word treat down here. And it unfolds this way. And then there's spooky at the top. Shows up really well on this fabric. And this is a uh, new khaki, is the color of the Lugana that I'm using. And I'm going to give this a one because I want to get this out and work on it and sort of transition to this as soon as I finish the Christmas one. And that's coming along really well. Um, you'll see that when I show my works in our next video. This pattern. Is from a cross stitch Christmas. It's a magazine that I used to pick up. And it's called Merry and Bright. And it's just cute. I love it. And this pattern is by uh, Anna. Just a second. I'm going to draw a blank. That's going to... I will get back to you. I have several of her patterns, too, and I'm drawing a blank. But anyway, um, I did not get very far on this when I started something... I, oops. I started the inside of the ornament, the blue part right there. And then Christmas came and went. So I'm going to give this a two. Barbara Anna, that's who, who the designer is on this. I knew it would come to me. Now, we're getting close to the end here uh, on these. This is a card. It came as a card, and then the pattern to stitch it was inside. This was in my mother's stash. And when I saw it, I was sure that I could get help from somebody finding it. So when I first showed it, we had started Floss Tube and hadn't been on very long and I shared this and I said if anybody knows where I can find the pattern I thought it might have been in a cross stitch and country crafts magazine back in the day um, they sent a note they told me where it came from they said keep your eyes open I think they said sometimes it's on eBay well then somebody sent me a link not later on and sure enough it was on eBay and it was a, a stationary card and the pattern is part of the card came with it. And so I just have this part to stitch yet. And my mother's stitching, I think this might have been the last thing she was working on because you can see that she was, her needle was no longer true. She was missing her uh, entry and exit points on the eight o'clock. Um, but I'm going to take up where she left off. I'm not going to change anything that she stitched and uh, put this up. For the holiday so I'm going to give this one a one as well and put this back at the top of the list of things to finish up so I can enjoy it at the holidays maybe not this one though I'm not sure because I have a couple of things I want to get done this I can't believe I never did get this out this summer or spring um, but it's going to come back soon I'm going to give it a two it's a long dog sampler pattern called Cardinal Points. I absolutely adore this. It's a combination with Gentle Art and they did a chart pack and all of the threads were in here and packaged with it. And it's fun. It is. It goes quickly when you get... I learned quickly that preloading my threads on something like this was really crucial to my experience. So I 
preload all my colors for the section I'm working in and I do duplicate needles for anything that might have a tremendous amount of that color and then it becomes just so much fun it it shows up just as fast as you can stitch and the colors change and the motifs appear and it's delightful I would like to try to discipline myself to do that more often with some of the other pieces I stitch but I find myself reverting back to the one needle one thread sort of speed and I don't get myself set up so hopefully I'll I'll carry that over but here's where I am on it when I last stitched I left off down at the first cardinal on the west side so I have to resume that and then I'll soon be ready to start carrying across I've got this right here and I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue this border and then come back and do all these motifs and then I can use the border as reference. I'll probably do my wording last. I'm going to give that a two. And now we're going to shift in the archive to a section that is actually needlepoint. I can't go into Stitches Unlimited that has needlepoint and not look at the needlepoint because that was something my mother did at the same time I taught myself embroidery. And I think she had done embroidery in Cruel. She belonged to a Club of the Month program when I was young. And I remember watching her when I got home from school or even when I was too young to go to school yet. And in the afternoons when her housework was done, she would sit down and she would get out her craft and she would watch her favorite show and do her, her craft work. So... Needlepoint has always been something I enjoyed. And I picked this up at Needler's Nest in Arizona. It is a little cube. It, it becomes a cube with a quail's head on each side. And it's an adorable little, I would call it a keychain. It may be small enough to be a fob when I'm done. I'll have to see what the dimensions look like. But it's got a very long, actually... If that wasn't all stapled up, I'd get it out. But it's a very long beaded fob that attaches to the cube. It's very pretty. I may just display them on my strawberry tree when I'm done. Who knows? Uh, the silks I'm using are a combination of Rainbow Gallery Splendor. And I think there's some Gloriana. And I might even have a bell swa tucked in there. So that's one. This is in the bin, but it isn't something I started. It's in here because it's with something I did start, which is very similar. And it took years before I realized that this was actually a dated item. Uh, this is a lobster claw. And it doesn't have a stitch guide. Neither of these do. So I was making up my own stitch guide to go with it. And I'm using a mosaic stitch in here, like a scotch stitch. And then I'm using a bit of a road stitch in this one. Uh, in places, it gives it some texture. It's really fun. Um, it wasn't until I finished and I was doing it and I realized the darker blue in that top part is actually supposed to be a snowflake because in the lobster's claw, I wasn't sure what he was holding, it is a piece of holly. He's got a berry in his hand, his claw, and that's a, a holly leaf out the top and the little berry in there. And then the, the little lobster's head right here and his claw. So that's his head. Now, this one won't take long to finish, but I'm going to give this one a one. I would like to finish it. I am not going to use it. Excuse me. Um, oh, you know what? The lobster does have... A stitch guide. I forgot about that. So this one does. Um, the pheasant was done by somebody local and I don't think I have a stitch guide to that one. But this will give you an idea of what the little guy looks like with all of his beads attached. So it's not it's not small but I think it's a one inch cube so it's not going to be gigantic either. So anyway all this time I thought it was just a lobster claw with a blue background and then I realized no, 
the word seasonal. See, you'll notice that this is what I worked from. There's no holly in this guy. They, they left it off, so it's not seasonal. It's just a red lobster. So, I don't know. Do I want to do the, the Christmas part and make him seasonal, or do I just want to do the red lobster? I have to decide. I guess I'll surprise you when I do finally figure it out. So those are those two. And then I have another one stuck in here. And again, these are all in the archive. Um, and I had started this. I had done just the white part on these guys. It's just a coin purse by a company that does these. They're pre-finished. You unzip them while you stitch them. Here's the actual packaging. It's called Stitch and Zip. I'm sure you've seen a series of these, all different things. They make eyeglass cases, this little coin purse. They make scissor fobs. I have a scissor fob I made. Uh, no, sorry, not fob, case that zips. Um, I do think I passed that along as a gift to somebody, though, a while back. I don't have that anymore. Uh, after I finished it, I mean, I finished it first. But that's what this will look like when it's done and you stitch it with cotton floss. So, and I don't know what the general populace does. I strand my floss before I use it. I think I get better coverage from it when I do that and pull it through and it fills better into the canvas, so. And if I read the directions, it might tell you what to do, but that's what I choose to do. Oh, got a thread stuck. Let's see if I can get off of it. There we go. So that's the bin. Now, there's quite a few, but if you do the math, there's approximately 48 to 50 of these little projects in that bin. And if you take the number of years I've been doing needlework, which is 48 years, that's only one a year. So that's really a good average, right? Now, they might have all shown up more recently than that when I started actually going to retreats and getting out ahead of myself with all the things I collect at the shops that are around. But let's put that aside and just look at the numbers. One a year. I'm really happy with that average. So uh, I'm going to have to go through, sort the... Shall we call it a cluster? that ranked in the one and two category uh, from the three to five, which are in a different basket, decide where to put them and, and get it sorted. I have a feeling I'm going to have the partially completed pieces. Let's call them that, partially completed, or hibernating. I'm going to come up with a word before our next video, and then I'll know where I'm going to keep them. In the meantime, I want to wrap up by asking you to leave a comment for me. If you have an interest in seeing the kits that I have, if you've had an interest in Mill Hill and bead kits, I know I do a lot of peyote work uh, that's different than these. Um, I have two for fall that I pulled out that I want to get uh, done this year. This is a pair. I just think it's adorable. Be cute on my refrigerator or in my craft room on my magnet board. And they're also, they can be done as um, magnets or pins. I mean, oftentimes they'll give you a choice, but I have so many of the different pieces of hardware from all the kits that I can finish it either way. Uh, and then this one is an apple, a paisley apple that I think is adorable. So these are going to get put into my progress bin, the ones I'm currently working on, and I'm going to work on those this fall. Excuse me for bumping the camera there. Here, uh, In the comments, let me know. Are you interested? I have a container about this size that's filled with those different kits that Mill Hill makes. And if you just like looking at them or you haven't seen them all or you want to see a representation of them, just leave a comment and I'll see about taking the time to share those with you sometime. Probably won't be in one of our regular videos. It'll kind of be in a call out like this that just gives me a little more time to display them. And as I wrap up, I am 
wanting to do a Quaker piece, not Quaker in the sense of it, it's a sampler, Quaker sampler per se, but something with Quaker motifs. And I want to do them with some different threads. So I revisited my threads and I was reminded of the Colaris threads that DMC came out with a few years ago. And it, it was a little while till we saw the, the range, but these are just beautiful threads. And I believe I have all the different skein colors, but they're a nice range of color. And I may have duplicates. I think on a couple of them I do have because I had picked up some colors that I thought I might use as the basis for a Quaker piece. Um, so I wanted to make sure I had enough thread. Um, I did try doing a Halloween ornament once with that. Just did not like the way the color was coming out on the piece and the way it was falling so I, I ended up not finishing that and stopping that piece. But this next batch, this has a couple of colors I really like. They have one in here called Noel. That's the red, white, and green. Then they have a spring one. And then the, the one that I think is, I love these colors together. I cannot think of anything right now that I'm going to use them for, but I really like these colors together. It's almost like a, a confetti or, or sort of a circus sort of look. Um, it's just a happy combination. And then there's some real pretty sort of floral almost colors in these. Natural colors. And then there's the Christmas red, white, and green. Some other ones. So, I'll show you what I'm thinking. That maybe one of those threads or something along those lines, and again, I've got my silks out and I'm gonna be looking at those, but I've been waiting to do Quaker Handiwork by Brenda Gervais with a needle and thread. I do have the call for colors for this as well, but I was thinking about changing it up and maybe doing it in a simple over dyed, or maybe doing the Quaker motifs and the alphabet in the over dyed and, and having it blend well with the tones and colors in the ones that are chosen for the motifs. Um, that would be a possibility too. This is the real thought behind wanting to do it with one color. I think this would just be splendid done in one color. I do have a couple of flower threads that are gorgeous colors that would also be pretty in this. They're by Water Lily. I should revisit those as well. I mean, excuse me, by Karen Water, by Karen, and they're not Water Lilies, they're wildflowers. Karen makes yarn that's used in a lot of needlepoint and it's over dyed, it's multiple colors. Uh, very much like that Colorus thread, and that's called watercolors. Then they make a flower thread, similar color schemes, and in fact, they make each of those threads in each color, and it's called wildflower, and then the silk version of their threads is called water lilies. So if you're new to stitching, that's the terminology I've been throwing around there. This is the Kathy Barrick pattern I just got, um, it's a reproduction of an 1806 Quaker sampler. And I also thought this would be really pretty as it's done in a monotone here. It would be pretty in any kind of monotone. Just not sure I want to do the black. So I'm playing with that. So those are the, those are the three samplers that I'm kind of thinking about the colors for. And then... I do want to revisit this book. I picked this book up when I went shopping um, in July uh, for my birthday. I had a, a gift for uh, needlework shopping. And 
I bought this had just come into the shop, I think, with um, Pat. The Sewing Club by Blackbird Designs. So I need to really go through this with the thought in mind that I'm looking for a project uh, and see what jumps out at me. I have a couple of ideas. So thank you for joining me for a trip to my needlework preserve uh, and taking a look at the collection or pile or cluster of needlework items that have ended up there. Thank you for bearing with me while I rated them. We're going to divide them up, get them back where they belong, and let me know if you'd like to look at those bead kits. And in the meantime, it's been fun spending part of my afternoon with you, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your day and that it includes some needlework time. And remember to share the joy in needlework. Thank you. Bye-bye.